mega church. This church has existed since the 70s. And there are 100 active members. The largest number of people that have ever been in the Dunwoody Church at any one time, 60 people. That is not going to have a huge impact. Do they want to grow? Certainly they want to grow. But they cap the number of people that can be in the building at any one time to 170 people. Traffic is not an issue. Staff has agreed. Mark Moore has indicated that even if you look at this in the worst case scenario, it, does not, it will not generate more traffic than the existing use would. And that does not take into account the cap. He has not looked at it with the cap in, in mind. The use is not the issue. The property is owned O&I. O&I allows church as an allowed use within the O&I district. The proposal is consistent with the comprehensive land use plan. The density that is proposed is consistent with the recommended density under the comprehensive land use plan for Sandy Springs. Again, we are not next to single family. The property is already zoned O&I. They brought this property with their eyes wide open, knowing what the property was zoned, knowing that in Sandy Springs, there you can do churches within residential districts. You can do churches along two-lane roads in neighborhoods. And here we've got a proposed church along a four-lane U.S. highway that um, is already zoned O&I and had adequate parking based on the code. And what we are proposing is to provide far more parking spaces than the code requires. Bottom line is that, that uh, the application should be approved pursuant to the staff's alternate conditions. Thank you, sir. Right, with that, we're going to close the public hearing. Members of the Planning Commission, they going to start us off on this. I've got a... Uh, a couple of questions for Mr. Galloway. In your request to expand uh, the building an additional 10,000 plus feet, plus or minus square feet, uh, you indicate that the uh, maximum size of any assembly room would be 1,300 square feet. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, two quick things. Number one is, uh, can you describe the function, what goes on during the week? Is this just uh, show up uh, most a uh, typical church will have a very small usage during the week and what what you're proposing has small usage so is this an ongoing uh, seven day a week uh, usage for uh, these 170 folks that you're talking about well first of all you've got um, a couple of different things a couple of different questions embedded in there um, I don't agree with your analysis that a typical church does not function during the week. Um, the churches I've been involved in have been very functional during the week, at all during the day and at night during the week. Uh, in this case, the Church of Scientology, the way they will operate, they operate seven days a week. They typically offer classes from 9.30 in the morning to about 9.30 at night uh, in three different um, or three to four different sessions. Um, of minimum of about two hours a, se a session. Um, and so they will have classes during the week, during the day, and, and during the evening. They offer uh, a, they have a chapel service that occurs on the weekend, uh, and that is where they come together for chapel. It is not a con congregational style um, church like um, you may be accustomed to. <laughs> that everybody turns out at the same time every week um, for one particular hour or one of a series of several hours. They don't typically do that. Uh, they do have a service that occurs on the weekend. Uh, and so the chapel will be used for that service, which is the largest assembly room, 1,300 square feet. Uh, and it may be used for a seminar during the week, but only on an occasional basis. Otherwise, it will be the, the general use of the building will be uh, the offices for counseling uh, and uh, classroom study. During the well, you, uh, you you continue to point back to the regulation criteria for churches, but uh, 
in most cases, the churches and these criteria set up where they typically have one large congregation of, of one session once or twice a week, and uh, the usage of the church is fairly minimum the rest of the week. As you described, uh, this application, it appears to me this usage of the building is more in line with a office building than a church from a usage standpoint, uh, religion aside. Is that a fair statement? Uh, no, because you, you are imposing your uh, definition of church use, whereas if you look at the church use definition under the Sandy Springs Code, it certainly complies with the church use definition. If you look at the definition of church use and the application of that under the federal statutes and under the Constitution, it certainly follows and falls in line with that. As an engineer, you would you know that when you buy a piece of property and you go to a piece of uh, and you go to a community and you look at uh, your charge with the responsibility of looking at the regulations to find out what what the regulations will be that will govern the use and development of that property. And in this case, if you look in the Sandy Springs regulations, which this is the parking regulation here. It states that churches and other places of worship churches and other places of worship so it anticipates a broad definition and it, and it indicates that the minimum requirement is one space for every 3.5 fixed seats in the largest assembly area and one space for every 30 square feet in the largest assembly area depending on whether or not you have fixed seats or you have movable seats and if you come to a community you need to be able to look at the regulations and know how to apply those regulations. Church of Scientology did, the, did that in this case. They knew what the regulations were. They bought the property in reliance on those regulations and in reliance on the fact that this city and the county before it have, has always, always imposed and interpreted that regulation in the same manner. And so consistency in the, inter in the interpretation of the regulation is certainly a requirement. Let's try to just answer the question uh, as it's asked, and then we'll keep this moving along if you will, please. Well, any more? Um, I, I have a question of Nancy. Under your first set of conditions, what would the parking requirements be there? Give me one second. Page 18, Nancy. No, I think it's page 26. On the computer, 26. On the paper, it's 18. <laughs> we have the analysis on page 17, so maybe have three pages to pick. 111 is what it's <coughs> Yeah, what? 111 for uh, 32,000. Okay, that, that, what the ordinance would require would be the 111 with a 32,000 square feet. That's what, if that's about, about what the ordinance would require. I'm not exactly sure because this was a larger property um, than when it was originally zoned, so I'm not sure exactly how that calculated for Polk County. Okay, I guess my, my question really is, looking at, I was trying to get some sense of what, using your recommended conditions, what the parking would be there. And your 111 is a reasonable figure. Thank you. And the requirement would be 97, correct? That's correct. Susan? Under the staff recommended conditions, 1B, no overnight stays, 11 p.m. to 6 a.m.? Does that mean no overnight stays or no activity at all? No, that's, that is, that's relating to a residential occupancy. That's to stay overnight as so opposed to. Are there any hours of operation in the code? There are not because uh, there, there aren't any for church 